Good morning. January the 18th, 2022. Or 2022. It's the 18th today, like I said. Have you read the 18th proverb today? Hmm? If not, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me to Proverbs chapter 18. We're going to have a little read through, through Proverbs 18. Also with a little uh, expository going on here as well. Yesterday was a, kind of a bad day. Um, not feeling too well and didn't really get much sleep last night. And I uh, was up really, really, really early this morning. And just uh, going through... Um, my morning devotional time with the Lord, the Lord just kind of stopped me at Psalm 18 and it's like, get your pen. So, I want to share some of this with you. Proverbs chapter 18, beginning at verse 1. Please, follow me along uh, in the scriptures that we will be reading today. Please follow me. Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermittleth with all wisdom. Well, what is wisdom? What is wisdom? We learn what true wisdom is in Job chapter 28, verse 28. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So a man having separated himself seeketh and intermittleth with all wisdom. But see, the wisdom that you and I are supposed to seek after is the wisdom that cometh from God only. Okay? There are two wisdoms. There is the wisdom of man, which is the wisdom of the devil. And there is the wisdom that cometh from God. Okay, because see here, through desire, a man having separated himself, separated himself. Now, we are to separate ourselves as the church of the living God. What are we supposed to be separated from and on to? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 on to verse 18. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Now, a lot of people like to tie this into um, marriage and whatnot. Um, it, it does good. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good idea to be unequally yoked in marriage with someone who is not of faith as you are. But in the context of this chapter, it's talking about fellowship and stuff like that. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And think about that. Think about that verse in, uh, with verse 1 in Proverbs chapter 18. Through desire a man having separated himself. Okay, So he wants wisdom. So he's separating himself. But yet it's saying, seeketh and middle intermiddleth with all wisdom. All wisdom. Guess what? All wisdom does not come from God. There is a wisdom that cometh from this world, that comes from Satan. Okay? The wisdom that cometh from this world, from Satan, is what? Earthly, sensual devilish. You read about that in James chapter 3, verses 14 on to verse 18, okay? The comparison between two wisdoms, okay? You read about that. But it says here, separated himself seeketh and intermiddleth with all wisdom. But see, if you are of the church of the living God, you are to seek the wisdom that comes from God only. Go back to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, picking up at verse 15. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? 
And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, come out from the world, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye, she, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now, Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, that we're, you know, we are not supposed to, totally supposed to alienate ourselves from the world, because we are called as ambassadors to be witness unto the lost, obviously. But see, in fellowship, okay? In fellowship, what concord hath Christ with Belial? What do you as a church of the living God have in common with the lost person? Hmm? Hmm? You're both sinners, yeah. You're a safe sinner, they're a lost sinner, yeah. But see, we are called to come out from amongst them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Okay? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Absolutely we are. Okay? Through desire, a man having separated himself seeketh and intermittleth with all wisdom. All wisdom. No, we are to seek the wisdom that comes from God only. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 8. And I, brethren... When I came to you, and I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with, with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. See, we are to prefer one another over the company of the world. What concord hath Christ with Belial? We are to prefer company with one another of the church of the living God, okay? And like we have talked about before here in verse 2, Paul is saying, For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Who is truly saved? Is Christ crucified in you? Are you dead to the world? Are you alive because Christ lives within you? See, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Remember, there are two wisdoms, okay? There is the wisdom of this world that is derived from Satan. And then there is the wisdom that cometh from above, which is first pure, peaceable, easy to be entreated. But the wisdom that cometh from this world, from the little G God of this world, is what? Earthly, based on earthly things. Sensual, based on the senses. Devilish, self-explanatory. Okay? Verse 4 again. Uh, let's read verse 3 again. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit, capital S, and, and of power. Why? Because Christ indwelt Paul. And see, Paul in verse 2 wanted to see who's really saved. Okay? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak the Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, saved, born again, converted, whose hearts are perfect with the Lord, not sinlessly perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. Why? Because it is earthly, sensual, devilish. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, 
even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So back in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1, through desire... A man having separated himself seeketh and intermittleth with all wisdom. Okay? So we see here someone separating himself from all the trappings of the world, but yet is intermittleth, is intermeddling himself with all wisdom. But see, we who are saved, born again, converted, we are to seek the wisdom that cometh from God only. Okay? Verse 2. A fool who says in his heart, hath no delight in understanding, departing from evil. Okay? They want to be, they want to be wrapped up in that. They want to be up to their neck in the world, right? A fool who says in his heart, there is no God, hath no delight in understanding, departing from evil, but that his heart may discover itself. <laughs> Remember, God knows your heart, yeah? Um, Proverbs chapter 26. Proverbs chapter 26. The fool's proverb. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 26, verses 10 on to verse 12. The great God that formed all things both rewardeth the fool who says in his heart there is no God and rewardeth transgressors as a dog returneth to his vomit, his heart may discover itself, so a fool returneth to his folly. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool who says in his heart there is no God than of him. See, someone who, someone who is, um, seeking to discover his own heart, you're a fool. You're a fool. And Proverbs 26, verse 12, seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? You hear people say, especially from these Christians, trust your heart. Trust your heart. Trust your feelings. You're a fool if you trust your heart. You're a fool if you trust your feelings. <laughs> It says here, there is more hope of a fool than someone who is wise in his own conceits. Okay? A fool hath no delight in understanding, departing from evil, but that his heart may discover itself. Get in touch with your feelings. Discover your own heart, right? And what saith the scripture about that? You ought to know where we're going with this one. Jeremiah chapter 17. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 and 10, of course, obviously. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. And the fruit of his doings. If uh, if you're a fool who says in his heart there's no God, and you're and you're seeking to go about, but that his heart may discover itself, <laughs> you're going to get what you you're seeking for. Yeah, God will give you what you're seeking for. Yeah, yeah. Because remember, the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. You got to be careful what you're seeking. Don't you can't trust your own heart. If you do, you have some big problems. And that's exactly what these Christians in these church buildings are telling all their parishioners and those who go on to them. Trust your heart. God knows your heart. Yeah. Yeah, he sure does. He sure does. Verse 3 in Proverbs chapter 18. When the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt. And with ignominy reproach. It's interesting here that verse 3 talks about when the wicked cometh, 
that's the wicked cometh from someone who has no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. Isn't that something interesting? Go to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 14 on to verse 19. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Why? When the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt. You see this, you see this exact trait in all these wicked devils here on YouTube. Okay? Uh, where, where did we leave off? Verse 15. Uh, no, verse 16. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. And that is what all these devils are seeking to do. To get people to turn away from the truth of the gospel. The truth of the faith that is in Christ Jesus. Okay? And, and these guys are up at all hours of the night. Working, playing keyboard warrior. Spreading hate. Spreading lies. Deceiving people while being deceived. Okay? Verse 17, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. They're Catholic, working for the Vatican as either a coadjutor or an agent of the Vatican, i.e. a Jesuit. Okay? But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. And go to Proverbs now, chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 12 on to verse 15. A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes. Yeah, hey, yeah, 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 trust me. Yeah, he speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. You know, playing keyboard warrior. <laughs> Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief continually. He soweth discord, which is all these devils do. And it's pathetic, too, seeing those who are supposedly of the church of the living God doing the same thing. Trying to sow discord. To make a name for themselves. Yeah. Therefore shall his calamity, the one who sows discord, the one who is uh, devising mischief in his heart um, continually, therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Hmm. Something to take note of in verse 3. In uh, Proverbs 18, when the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt, and with ignominy reproach. Mm. Verse 4, the words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Proverbs chapter 10. Proverbs chapter 10, verses 11 on to verse 21. Now, note the contrasts here. Look at, look at verse 4 again in Proverbs chapter 18. The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters. That's in a general term, isn't it? A man's mouth. The words of a man's mouth are what? Are as deep waters. And the wellspring of wisdom, there's the distinction there, as a flowing brook. And what is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. Okay, so in this verse alone, number one, it starts with the words of a man's mouth are as, a deep, are as deep waters, generally speaking. But then it says in verse four, and the wellspring of wisdom, from where comes true wisdom? From our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, as a flowing brook. Okay, now, 
Proverbs chapter 10, verses 11 on to verse 21. Note these contrasts here. The mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, but violence covereth the mouth of the wicked. Yeah, yeah. Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. Note, note these contrasts here, okay? In the lips of him that hath understanding, wisdom is found. You gotta like that. You gotta like that. You gotta like that. In the lips of him that hath understanding, departing from evil, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is found. You gotta love that. But look at the contrast. But a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. These King James Bible-believing Christians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but a rod is for the back of him that is void of understanding. I'm, talk I'm making specific reference onto these devils who claim to be born-again King James Bible-believing Christians, and they're not. That's what I'm talking about, okay? Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish who says in his heart, there is no God, and being foolish is behaving, living as if there is no God, is near destruction. You get, look at these contrasts. Isn't that beautiful? Let's continue. The rich man's wealth is a strong city. The destruction of the poor is their poverty. The labor of the righteous tendeth to life. The fruit of the wicked is sin. Remember, your labor in the Lord is not in vain. The labor that all these devils are laboring to do, it's sin. To bring in that man of sin, the son of perdition, okay? See, what they are doing is to, to bring in sin to introduce sin, to get you away from truth, to turn on to sin, onto them and stuff like that. But what does it say? Okay? The labor of the righteous tendeth to life. Okay? Laboring through the word. Okay? Not laboring to save yourself. Remember, too, this dispensationally and doctrinally is uh, under the law and that kind of stuff. But this is obviously for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 17. He is in the way of life, and Jesus Christ is the, is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. So, he is in the way of life that keepeth, keepeth instruction. But he that refuseth reproof, erreth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can tell a lot about a man with how he handles a rebuke. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool, who says in his heart there is no God. In the multitude of words, now look at this, in the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. In the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. Words in and of themselves generally are not sinful. Usually it's the context and how they are employed. There are words that are shameful. Yes, there are. Don't, get, don't think that there aren't. But in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. Meaning, you, you can talk with people. Like, brethren, we can, we can talk about things. Um, have multitude of conversations. In that, there is not sin, okay? But he that refraineth his lips is wise, okay? So remember, there's not, there, in the multitude of words that wanteth not sin, but sometimes it's better just to keep your mouth shut, okay? Verse 20, the tongue of the just is as choice silver. And look at this contrast. 
the heart of the wicked. Remember, God knows your heart is little worth. The lips of the righteous feed many. But fools, who say in their heart, there's no God, die for want of wisdom. They have no fear of the Lord. See? The words of a man's mouth are as deep waters, and the wellspring of wisdom as a flowing brook. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. You're going to love this. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Verses 9 on to verse 11. And moreover, because he was wise, and moreover, because the preacher, excuse me, was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. Okay? Remember, in the multitude of words there wanteth not sin, okay? But there are such a thing as bad words. Absolutely there are, okay? Absolutely. Like I said, generally it's the context in which words are used, but there is such a thing as bad words. We all pretty much know what these bad words are, and people like to play on relativism. Well, the for example, the F word is not... A bad word to me. It's not an acceptable word. Okay? It's not an acceptable word. There are bad words. But remember, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. Okay? In a general sense. Alright? In a general sense. Okay? The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads, and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. One shepherd. Who might that shepherd be? Hmm, I wonder. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 5. It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the the righteous in judgment. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 10 under verse 19. Accepting the, per the uh, person of the wicked. Going along with wicked people. Because what does this verse say? It is not good to accept the person of the wicked to overthrow the righteous in judgment. Okay? My son, Proverbs 1, verses 10 on to verse 19. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without, without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find our precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us, and let us all have one purse. Come on, join us. Join us. Come on. A little won't hurt, right? My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. And now go to Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. Verses 24 on to verse 25. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Why? Lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. You know, the company you keep, 
that company that you keep can rub off on you. Okay? You spend time around people any length of time. It, it seems to just happen that you um, end up adapting or adopting some of their mannerisms or stuff like that. It, it's something that happens. You are the company you keep. Who are you keeping company with? Are you keeping, see, like I said, we are supposed to keep company with ourselves as the church of the living God going out there witnessing unto the lost. What concord hath uh, Christ with Belial, right? Okay? So we are to keep, have fellowship one with another. We are to prefer and seek one another of the church of the living God to have fellowship with one another. And in the multitude of uh, words, there wanteth not sin. But see, you get someone, a son of Belial, who brings in bad words, words that are not acceptable. Okay? See? You are the company you keep, remember. You are the company you keep. Keep that in mind, okay? Verse 6. Uh, now, we got a few uh, one-verse references here. A fool's lips. Remember the fool? A fool's lips enter into contention. Someone who says in his heart there is no God, even though they're putting on a facade trying to say they're a Christian. What does it say there? A fool's lips enter into contention. These coadjutors, these infiltrators, 99.9% .9 of the time, the things that they say are contentious, lead to contention. And they could say it with, you know, winketh with his eye, speak, uh, speaketh with his feet, teacheth with his fingers, you know. They could put on a good facade, right? But see, a fool's lips enter into contention. And of course, Proverbs 13, Proverbs 13, verse 10, just one verse. Only by pride cometh contention. Contrast, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Okay? And then Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17, verse 14. Just one verse. The beginning of strife is as when one letteth out water. Therefore leave off contention before it be meddled with. But yet we read a fool's lips enter a fool's lips enter into contention. It's because they're not regenerated. They're not saved. They're not born, born again. They don't have the Lord within them. So even though they're putting on a good facade trying to fake it, okay? And they can not fake it, but they can't do it for too long. Because like I told you, every time, boom, they shoot themselves in the foot sooner or later, okay? Just by them speaking, their lips calleth for, what does it say? A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes, okay? Psalm, uh, Psalm 10. Psalm 10. Psalm 10. I usually... When it comes to these types of videos, I use two sets of scriptures, but I obviously am not doing that today. Psalm 10, verses 2 on to verse 7. The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Remember the poor. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. All your little trip, tricks and traps that you devil scum is, are, are constantly coming up with, you're going to be taken in your own trap eventually. You really are, okay? For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. That's a good admonition for you to beware of covetousness, okay? The wicked through the pride of his countenance. Remember, countenance denotes Bodily, body language, if you will. And visage, your face, okay? The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he puffeth at them. Mm -hmm. 
he has said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Interesting, huh? A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. Verse 7. A fool's mouth is his destruction. Isn't it, buddy? <laughs> yeah. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. Proverbs 29, one verse. Proverbs 29, one verse, verse 11. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. There are some devils out there who are really good at controlling themselves. Everybody's favorite YouTube uh, Jesuit, Elmer from New York. Um, as far as I am aware, there is hardly a video where that man has lost his cool on camera. See, he's too refined of a Jesuit to do so, okay? Hey, you, idiot! You ought to take cues from your elder brother there on how to behave and not let things get to you so much, okay? But, okay, the, the point is, verse 11 again, a fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. See, blurting out things, no, no control, no composure, nothing of the sort. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verses 34 on to verse 37. O oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, Speak good things. Oh, they can use flattery. Oh, they're really good at flattery. But what is good? There is none good but one. That is God. And what is good? His word, the authorized version of the scriptures. That's why these devils can't teach anything. They can't, they can't teach anything. They can't preach anything. Why? Oh, generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words... Thou shalt be condemned. Dispensational difference here. Yes, this is instruction for righteousness, okay? But see, you got to remember too about some of these people who are infiltrators. There are devils out there who are devils, obviously not saved, but yet they can produce really good sermons. Why? Because the scriptures speak for themselves. But like I said, they always always blow it. They always shoot themselves in the foot sooner or later. Always. Every single time. Every single time. 100% of the time they do sooner or later. Okay? Keep that in mind. And now Proverbs 26 again. Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. Come on. Go back to... Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26, verses 24, on to verse 26. He that hateth, dissembleth with his lips, cut someone down with their words, with their lips. Just strip you to bare bones with your words. Yeah. And layeth up deceit within him. When he speaketh, Fair. Oh, yeah, you can really speak a good, soft word. You sound so cordial, so polite. 
when he speaketh fair, believe him not. Why? For there are seven abominations in his heart, whose hatred is covered by deceit. His wickedness shall be shewed before the whole congregation. They shoot themselves in the foot. Sooner or later. Happens every time, brethren. Happens every time. Verse 8 in Proverbs chapter 18. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Hmm. The words of a talebearer. Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11, one verse. Proverbs 11, verse 13. What is a talebearer? A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. Be careful with whom you divulge personal sensitive information. Be very careful to whom you divulge personal, sensitive information. That has bitten me in the backside. That has bitten some of you in the backside before. Okay? By people who come in who speak fair. They seem so sweet. But there are seven abominations in their heart. Beware with whom you trust. <laughs> Beware. 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 Even when you're trying to be kind to people, you have to beware because they will use it against you if they, if they see a moment to do so. Okay? And Proverbs 25 now. Proverbs 25 verses 9 on to verse 13. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. Why? Lest he that heareth it put thee to shame, and thine infamy turn not away. A word spoken in, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pitchers of silver. Fitly, in due time. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. A word fitly it fits right in there, you could say. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. As an earring, earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold, so is a wise reprover upon an obedient ear. A wise, someone who has wisdom. Wisdom, denoting fear of the Lord. Reprover upon an obedient ear. Someone who is, in a, who is saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, willing to do what the Lord says, an obedient ear. As the cold of snow in the time of harvest, so is a faithful messenger to them that send him, for he refresheth the soul of, soul of his masters. Very interesting. Very interesting. The words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Verse 9. He also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. Those who are slothful do tend to be wasting things, don't they? Don't they? Proverbs 26 again. Proverbs 26 again. Proverbs 26, verses 13 on to verse 16. The slothful man saith, There is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. I can't go out there. Why? Because a lion's out there. The devil's out there going to get me. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard 
is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And what, what verse were we on? Verse 9. Check this out. Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. You know, how many times have we talked about the excuses and stuff like that, right? Right? Um, <laughs> those who make excuses... Gotta be, you got to watch out for people who make excuses, brethren. Someone who constantly makes excuses and takes no responsibility for their own actions. They're lost. A brother or a sister can have a moment where they are weak and decide, like Job after constant uh, antagonizing from his three friends, okay? But yet there again, Job was responsible and accountable and took responsibility because the antagonism that he received from his three friends, Job ended up being boastful, being arrogant. And the Lord's like, hey, hey, buddy. And then what did uh, Job said? Say, therefore I abhor myself and repent in dust and ashes. See, Job man, uh, manned up. He took responsibility for it, okay? Watch out for those who make excuses. One second, brethren. Sorry about that. I had to write that down before I forgot. Luke 14, verses 15 on to verse 24. Uh, what does the Lord think about people who make excuses? It's a good example. Luke 14, verses 15 on to verse 24. And when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto them, unto him, excuse me, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper, and bade many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to them, that were bidden. Come! For all things are now ready. Dispensationally, this is still under the law for the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? This is doctrinally the Old Testament. Type. Our Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Is come in the flesh. Okay? There is the Messiah. Okay? He's like, hey, here I am. Come on. Come on. Bidding the Jews to come. Okay? And they all with one consent began to make excuse. Oh, I, an example. Oh, I hope the, I hope the catching way doesn't happen soon. I, I you know, I, I don't want you, you gotta screw loose, dear friend. Let's continue. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. And I pray, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Got a lot of property, huh? Yeah. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Oh, you're too busy, huh? Ah, you're too busy. Taking care of that ground, huh? Yeah, you're way too busy. Yeah. And another said, I have married a wife, therefore, and therefore, I cannot come. Maybe you could put into that, well, my wife doesn't want me to come, or, oh, I'm looking at the, look at my wife, I got a, you know, picking flesh. Interesting. Look at those excuses. Look at those excuses. Your possessions, you're too busy, and flesh. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. So that servant came, verse 21, and shewed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servants, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor, and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, 
It is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. For I say unto you, that none of those men which were bidden shall taste of my supper. This is also making a uh, reference onto the current dispensation about how the Jews, uh, the Hebrews, rejected the kingdom of heaven and then eventually rejected the gospel and it was uh, given on to us Gentiles. Not given on to us, excuse me. We were grafted in. Okay? We, the church has not replaced Israel. Ugh. Okay? But we were grafted in. Okay? It came on to us to make them jealous. See? Okay? But there again... Looking at verse 21, with people who make excuses, it says here, So that servant came and shewed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Fine, go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt and the blind. Angry. Watch it with those excuses, people. Watch it with those excuses. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 on to verse 17. Okay? Verse 9 in uh, Proverbs 18. He also that is slothful is... Uh, is he also that is slothful in his work is brother to him that is a great waster. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 on to verse 17. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools who say in the heart there is no God, but as wise, fearing the Lord, church of living God, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Romans chapter 12. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? Watch out for excuses. Like I've told you, lost people make excuses. Yeah, yeah, there are legitimate circumstances where, yeah, okay, there is a legitimate excuse that I have. Yes, those are, that, those are there. But when you got people who hide behind their excuses, hello there, my young friend. They're lost. <laughs> Verse 10 in Proverbs 18. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. You know how in John chapter 10, where the Lord says, you know, I am the door. If any man go in by me, you know, we are to go through our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the door. Okay? The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Check this out. Check this out. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 on to verse 13. Oh, 10, Brad. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth Onto righteousness, onto righteousness. 
And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Greek is a Gentile, okay? For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But see, you arrive to this point by number one, being broken of your self-righteousness, not speaking to you of the church of the living God, you know this, to you lost people, um, being broken of your self-righteousness, having godly sorrow, contrition, because it's your fault, can't make excuses, and in fear of the Lord because he can send you to hell, call upon his name, ask him, ask him to forgive you, okay? It's actually very simple. Like I, like I constantly say, the hard part is getting over yourself, okay? But see, like it says here in Proverbs 18, verse 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. And of course, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 8 under verse 10. But let us, those who are saved of the church of the living God, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, to go through the time of Jacob's trouble. Christians will be going through the great tribulation, yeah, but the time of Jacob's trouble, the church of the living God is not going through that. Yes. Why? For God hath not appointed us to wrath, which the time of Jacob's trouble is, but to obtain salvation, being caught up by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, what are we reading to here? Oh, here, let's read verse 11, okay? Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do. We added that verse, kind of had to, okay? And First uh, John chapter 5, First John chapter 5. And, and this one right here, First John chapter 5, verse, uh, what is that, 13? You, I feel sorry for you Catholics because you're taught what is called the sin of presumption, that, it's a sin to know that you're saved and going to be in heaven with the Lord. I feel sorry for you. I, I, I truly do. Because you got to die in a state of grace. And if you don't die in a state of grace, what happens? You go to purgatory where you burn for a while to make you ready to go. to. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. See, when you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord, and he save you. You are sealed unto the day of redemption. Once saved, always saved. Okay? 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. Excuse me. That ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. See, if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus, you know where you're going. And only the devil wants to confuse that. Beware of that, people. Beware of that. Verse 11 in Proverbs chapter 18. The rich man's wealth is his strong city and as an high wall in his own conceit. Psalm 49. Psalm 49. You know, the rich man's wealth is his strong city and as an high wall in his own conceit. Remember, riches is not always do re me. Riches can be possessions and stuff like that. But I've known Christians 
who have riches, do re mi. And it's exactly that. It's a high wall in their own conceit. Do you realize that if someone has riches, whether it's do re mi or a lot of stuff, you know, you know you got it harder than us po' folk? You, you realize that, don't you? Why? Because sometimes, what do you got to do? You got to manipulate circumstances and tug at people's heartstrings, don't you? Why? Because you got a lot of stuff. Right? Right. Yeah. Charlatan. But... Proverbs chapter 49, verse 6 on to verse 10. They that trust in their wealth, remember, wealth is not just that. Remember that. Don't forget that. See, the devil wants you to think it's wealth is just that. And you look at these advertisements and all this nonsense, especially with them charismatic Pentecatholic scum the uh, uh, name it and claim it guys, the cell evangelists, okay? They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. Why is that? For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceaseth forever. Hold your place here and go to First Pete, First Peter, First Pete, chapter one, First Peter, chapter one, verses eighteen on to verse twenty-one. First Peter, chapter one, verses eighteen on to verse twenty-one. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Verse 19, but with the precious blood of Christ. What does the blood of Christ mean? It's precious. It's far more valuable. Go back to Psalm 49. Verse 6. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, worldly things, none of them can by any means redeem his brother, nor give to God a ransom for him. You're not going to buy your way into heaven. You're not going to buy your way into God's good graces. Like Shimon the sorcerer did, uh, offering them money. Hey, give me, here's money, give me that power so whoever I lay hands on, they'll receive the Holy Ghost as well. And these Adults like to tell you, these easy believism heretics, they like to tell you that that guy was saved. Come on now. Let's continue. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceaseth forever. Okay, I'll look. Okay. That he should still live forever and not see corruption. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool, and the brutish person perish, and leave their wealth to others. Naked came you into this world, and guess what? You're going out naked. Okay? You ain't taking nothing with you. Okay? But now let's skip to verses 16 under verse 20 now. Brethren, be not thou afraid when one is made rich, when the glory of his house is increased. Dude. Dude.
For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Notice how it says descend. Interesting. Though while he lived, he blessed his soul. And men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. Yeah, look at that guy. He's a Christian. Yeah, he's got millions. And he's the first one to tell you, look at how good he's doing, right? Yeah. 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 For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. Though while he lived, he blessed his soul. And men will praise thee when thou doest well to thyself. He shall go to the generation of his fathers. They shall never see light. Man that is in honor and understandeth not is like the beasts that perish. Man that is in honor and understandeth not, not departing from the things of the world, who has riches, is like the beasts that perish, unregenerate people. And it seems that those Christians who have a lot of goods, a lot of money, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, where, where were we? Uh, we already read that. We already read that. We already read that. And also, go to, for some reason, one second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. I had forgotten to write down, I had forgotten to write down, 1 Timothy chapter 16. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17. On to verse 19. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Okay? And remember how it says in Corinthians, how not many mighty, how, how, how not many noble are called. Why is that? Because when you got the best things of this world, look at Solomon, okay? Look at King Solomon. Look what can happen to someone when they have riches. Like I said, y'all out there who got lots of stuff, even those of you of the Church of the Living God, you got it worse than us po folk. You really do. You really do. There is, it's, you're not without hope. God forbid, no. If you're the church of the living God, but you got to remember, naked came you in, and you're going out naked, okay? Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. I've been told by people who are rich <laughs> that, you know, rich people don't become rich by sharing. But right here, ready to distribute. Now, Paul talks about, you know, you don't give so that you hurt yourself. Ob obviously not. But, you know, stingy, tight wads. Okay? And that... That has nothing to do with tithing. Tithing is not a requirement for us today. Please, please. General senses. I, I, millionaire Christians. There's no sense. Come on. Come on. Come on. They're willing to communicate about how blessed they are because God gave them all the desires of their heart. But oh, how willing are they to distribute? Are they ready? Re ready to distribute their glory? Yeah, right. Laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I, had, uh, I, I had that, and I didn't write it down, so beg your pardon. Back to Proverbs 18, verse 12. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. 
Job chapter 41. Before destruction, the man of the heart of man is haughty, pompous, stuck up, that kind of thing, haughty, brazen. Okay? Job chapter 41, verses 24, on to verse 34. His heart is as firm as a stone. Yea, as hard as a piece of another millstone. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings, they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold. The spear, the dart, nor the habergeon. He esteemeth iron as straw, and brass as rotten wood. Uh, this is about Leviathan, um, Satan, you know, the red dragon. This is talking about a dragon, Satan, okay? Job chapter 41 is a veiled, uh, is a veiled thing of Satan, okay? He's talking about Satan, the red dragon, okay? Let's continue. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Darts are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of a spear. Sharp stones are under him. He spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoare. Upon earth there is not his like who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. Yeah, yeah. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, arrogant, stuck up, following their father, the devil. Why do you think I hate pride so much? Why do you think I praise the Lord that he gave me a thorn in the flesh to humble me? Okay? And also to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verses 5 on to verse 10. Do ye think that the scripture saith in vain, the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You can't resist the devil unless you submit to the true God of the scriptures, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay, Submitting to a God of your own making, but can Satan cast out Satan? Give me a break, okay? Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Why? Because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Okay? <laughs> Similar to her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Okay? What's the name of your channel today there, pal? Okay? Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Amen. Amen. Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty. Only by pride cometh, uh, cometh contention. And before honor is humility. Verse 13 in Proverbs 18. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. You ever been witnessing to someone and it's like, no, I don't want to hear it. I know all about it. Uh, well, well, dude, it? nope, 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 not going to hear it. Know-it-alls. Uh, know-it-alls. They're, they're, they're know-it-alls, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Oh, how many I've... 
I remember <laughs> one young guy I was, uh, the Lord gave me a chance to witness to, and he's like, oh, I know all there is to know about God. Really? <laughs> uh, I've been saved for oh, going on 14 years, and I don't even know the, uh, you know, I'm not even halfway there of knowing all there is to know about God. Please inform me. <laughs> yeah, please inform me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are so some people who are so stuck up and think they know it all. They answer a matter before they hear it. Okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world or the accuser of the brethren? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? And skipping a little to 27 on to verse 29. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world, the things that the world calls foolish, like being saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You know, adhering your life to the scriptures, okay? But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty and base things of the world, and things which are despised hath God chosen, like the cross. Yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. Why is that? That no flesh should glory in, that no flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh should glory in his presence. See, when someone answereth a matter before he heareth it, okay, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Okay? Okay? Now, now don't get me wrong. There are, in, on occasions, like with certain doctrines of devils, uh, for example, that, that satanic, evil devil, Arnold Murray, who's burning in hell from Shepherd's Chapel, he, he did a teaching on the gap theory saying that the earth is millions of years old. You don't, you don't uh, as a church of the living God, you don't abide that stuff. You're like, oh, just shut up, shut up. But when it comes to truth, especially on the witnessing to the lost, you're not going to hear it. You, or you answer a matter before you hear it, it's folly and shame onto you when you don't consider the truth. Okay? Now, where, where, where were we going to go? Romans chapter 1, of course. Of course. Romans chapter 1, verses 22 on to verse 25. The world! You know, you people who go to your Jesuit colleges to get a, a $100,000 piece of paper on your wall that means nothing! Yeah, yeah, and you educate yourself in the ways of man and in all their sophistry and philosophy. Yeah, yeah. Romans chapter 1, verses 22 and verse 25. Professing themselves to be wise, wise in this world, worldly wise, as uh, the late John Bunyan phrased it. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Oh, man, uh, corruptible man, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And to birds, the third member of the Satan, uh, the third person of the satanic Catholic Trinity, you know, the little dove, okay? And four-footed beasts, like the um, uh, the thing that Aaron made, the golden calf, and creeping things, Nehushtan, the serpent on a pole, which is very interesting that the medical things here in uh, our country especially, and uh, with the United Nations, the Jesuit United Nations, they all have a Nehushtan on it. Ain't that something? Yeah. Wherefore? God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a 
lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And also too, remember, Satan is a created being. He's a creature. So professing themselves to be wise, they became fools who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Remember, Satan is a created being. You serve a man, you're serving your father, the devil. Simply put, okay? Now, verse 14 in Proverbs chapter 18. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? 1 Corinthians chapter 2. A, the spirit of man. What is the spirit of man? Spirit of this world. Okay? The spirit of man will what? Sustain his infirmity. But a wounded spirit who can bear. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. One verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. What does that verse say again? The spirit of man will sustain his infirmity. Right away, I'm brought to mind the perpetual victim. I'm a victim. I'm ever a victim. It's always someone else's fault. Now, Paul was uh, glad of his infirmities so that Christ could be strong in him. But see this, the spirit of man playing the weakling, the perpetual victim, to gain sympathy and pity. Mm. But what does it say here? But a wounded spirit who can bear. Okay? First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. Watch out for these perpetual victims. Oh, woe is me. Constantly. Who never take accountability for their own doings. Watch out for those types of people. They're lost. Okay? John, 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 to under verse 10. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. You're a lost person saying, I have no sin. You deceive yourself. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, pertaining unto the saved, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So there are lost people. Well, I'm not a sinner. Eh, yeah, the truth is not in you. The truth is not in us. If we say we have no sin, well, I don't need to be saved. I don't need a savior because there's no sin in me. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, well, I don't sin anymore. I'm not a sinner anymore. We make him a liar and his word is not in us. His word is not in us. Who is the truth? Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. You're saying, well, I'm not a sinner. If you're truly saved, born again, and converted of the church of the living God, you're a sinner. But you're a safe sinner, see? And also, let's finish this particular verse up with Isaiah chapter 66. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and verse 2. Isaiah chapter 66, verses 1 and verse 2. Now get a load of this. Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me, and where is the place of my rest? 
What are you going to do for God? What are you going to do to God? <laughs> what can you What can you make for God? He He made him, He made you. Hmm? What is that? Um, before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. Hmm? The spirit of a man will sustain sustain his infirmity. Spirit of man. But a wounded spirit who can bear? Verse 2 in Isaiah chapter 66. For all those things hath mine hand made, including you, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. And you can cross-reference this with Psalm 51. Okay, But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. But a wounded spirit, who can bear? Is your spirit wounded? Wounded by what? Pride? Hmm? Go to the Lord. Go to the Lord, to the Lord in that wounded broken state because he's your only hope verse 15 the heart of the prudent getteth knowledge and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge now look at that verse the fear of the lord that is wisdom and to depart from evil is understanding the fear of the lord will lead on to knowledge prudence and wisdom see wise in that verse and uh, and the ear of the wise, the ear of the wise, okay, the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge, okay, okay. Proverbs chapter eight. Proverbs chapter eight, verses four on to verse seventeen. Unto you, O man, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools who say in their heart, there is no God, be ye of an understanding departing from evil heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. You have wisdom, the fear of the Lord, okay? You have the fear of the Lord in you, which is true wisdom. That will lead on to knowledge, okay? Knowledge, all right? They are all plain to him that understandeth, and write to them that find knowledge. Receive instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. What are we reading to here in verse uh, 17, okay? I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, there's the tie-in, and find out knowledge of witty inventions. Here it is. Verse 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I hate. I truly believe out of all the sins there are, one that's on the top of the list of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is pride. What as you, the creation, have any right to boast to the one who created you, even even if you don't want to believe on him or not. Okay? Counsel is mine. And sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me. And those that seek me early, early, shall find me. And 
Proverbs chapter 1. Go back to that. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 29 on to verse 33. The contrast, though. Okay? The contrast. What is the contrast? Okay, verse 15. The heart of the prudent getteth knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeketh knowledge. Okay? Seeking the Lord. In fear of the Lord, you seek wisdom. The fear of the Lord, that will lead to knowledge. But those who seek the fear of man, the things of this world, here's a contrast. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 29, on the close of the chapter. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is wisdom. Wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge comes from wisdom. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. Okay? Okay? They were none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. He who heareth the mouth, uh, he who, uh, what is that? What is that? I don't, uh, uh, he that answereth the matter, verse 13, before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Okay? Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. God will hand them over. God shall send them strong delusion who not, for those who receive not the love of the truth. Okay? For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Amen. Amen. Verse 16 in Proverbs chapter 18. A man's gift maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. Proverbs chapter 19, just one verse, verse 6. Many will entreat the favor of a prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. Yeah, yeah. And Proverbs 21, another one verse. Proverbs 21, verse 14. A gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom, strong wrath. And another one verse, Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 4. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place, for yielding pacifieth great offenses. And why a man's gift maketh room for him, and bringeth him before great men. Verse 17. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. Proverbs 21 again. Verses 2 on to verse 5. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, right? But the Lord pondereth the hearts. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but everyone that is hasty only to want. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just. A uh, bullheaded, stubborn, won't be swayed. You think you know you're right when seven men can render a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Proverbs 19, verses 20 under verse 21. Hear counsel and receive instruction that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. For there are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord that shall stand. You know, where it says here in verse 17, but his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. He that is first in his own cause seemeth just. But his neighbor cometh and searcheth him. Hmm. You might feel justified in something that you're doing. But if someone, but if the Lord sends a rebuke upon you, like, hey, 
You need to consider. Be warned of this. Be warned. Take heed. Verse 18. The lot causeth contentions to cease, and parteth between the mighty. Numbers chapter 26, all the way, all the way into the Torah. Numbers chapter 26. Numbers chapter 26, verses 52 on to verse 56. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Unto these, unto these the land shall be divided for an inheritance according to the number of, the, of names. To many thou shalt give the more inheritance, and to few thou shalt give the less inheritance. To every one shall his inheritance be given according to those that were numbered of him. Notwithstanding, the land shall be divided by lot. According to the names of the tribes of their fathers, they shall inherit. According to the lot shall the possession thereof be divided between many and few. Okay? Also, Joshua chapter 17. Joshua chapter 17. Joshua chapter 17, verses 14 on to verse 18. Right? Yes. And the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua, and the lot separateth between the mighty. And the children of Joseph spake unto Joshua, saying, Why hast thou given me but one lot, and one portion to inherit, seeing I am a great people, for as much as the Lord hath blessed me hitherto? And Joshua answered them, If thou be a great people, then get thee up to the wood country, and cut down for thyself there in the land of the Perizzites and of the giants, if Mount Ephraim be too narrow for thee. And the children of Joseph said, The hill is not enough for us. And all the Canaanites that dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron, both they who are of Beth Shean and of her towns, and they who are of the valley of Jezreel. And Joshua spake unto the house of Joseph, even to Ephraim and Manasseh, saying, Thou art a great people, and hast great power. Thou shalt not have one lot only. But the mountain shall be thine, for it is a wood, and thou shalt cut it down, and the outgoings of it shall be thine. For thou shalt drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots, and though they be strong. And you, you can also make, I guess, about how they parted my garments and cast, or they cast lots for my garments and stuff like that. But right here in verse 18, again, the lot causeth contentions to cease and parteth between the mighty. And the land was divided by lot for inheritance. Okay? What does that mean? Sometimes when you got certain things um, that come up, flip a coin for it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but like I said, in verse 18, the lot causeth contentions to cease and parteth between the mighty. And the, uh, for Israel, the land was divided by lot. Okay? Verse 19. A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. And unfortunately, on a personal note, I have experienced this myself. Um, both ways, both ways. Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Verses 21 on to verse 26. Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 on to verse 26. This is the Sermon on the Mount. This is how it's going to be during the kingdom of heaven. This is instruction in righteousness. Okay. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, speaking as king, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause 
shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Racha, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Why is that? Because the king is present on the earth. This is how it's going to be in the kingdom of heaven. Okay? Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thine adversary quickly, whilst thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Verily, I say unto thee, Thou shalt by no means come out thence till thou hast paid the uttermost farthing. A brother offended is harder. What does the verse say? A brother offended. A brother. Someone of the church of the living God for our instruction in righteousness. A brother offended is harder to be one than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. There are brethren out there who we've had contentions and unfortunately we've had to split ways and neither of us, we, we won't be able to get along and that's sad, but it happens. And their contentions are as the bars of a castle, okay? This is an unfortunate thing. We, as the Church of the Living God, when we have headbuttings with a fellow brother or a sister, we got to do what we can to make peace. Sometimes the best thing you can do in a situation like that is like, okay, look, you and me, we're saved, we're brethren, but you and me ain't going to get along. Why is that? Because of our flesh, okay? We're not going to get along. The best thing to do, like what Abraham did, you know, with him and Lot, you go over there and you stay over there. You leave me alone. I'll go over here and I'll stay over here and I'll leave you alone, okay? That sometimes, that is the best thing that could be done. Sometimes, unfortunately, because of our flesh, sometimes that's the only thing that could be done. And it happens. It happens. And, of course, with this, Acts chapter 15, Acts chapter 15, verses 36 on to verse 41. Mm. And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, of course we had to come to this, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them, the bars of a castle, bars made out of iron, iron sharpeneth iron, remember? Yeah. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed on to Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, confirming the churches. Like I said, back in uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse uh, 19, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. It happens. Unfortunately, I, I, wish, I wish it wasn't the case, but that does happen. It does happen. Okay? Now, verse 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Proverbs chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12, 
verses 12 on to verse 14. The wicked desireth the net of evil men. Note the contrasts here. But the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. Okay? The wicked desireth the net of evil men. Oh, like the Jesuits using their tactics to draw people after them. Okay? But the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. Note the contrasts here. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with the good with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense with a C, a noun, of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. What are we reading to in this? Okay, that's it. And also now go to Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4. Not Hebrews. Where are you going? Colossians chapter 4. Verses 2 on to verse 6. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. With all praying also for us, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it may that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom, the fear of the Lord, toward them that are without, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Okay? Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. And of course, this is verse 20 again. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. James chapter 3. Of course, we had to come here. Verses 5 on to verse 13. Hi. I got to remember this one. So do you. You devils don't count. You're going to hell. So on you. But even so, verses 5 on to verse 13 in James chapter 3. Even so, the Tongue is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beasts and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. You know, there are some Bibles that say, instead of mankind, humankind. <laughs> but the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. That's why, you know, when you got these guys who can't control themselves. You know, when the Lord saves you, it is true. One of the very first things, at least with me, one of the very first things that he cleaned up was this foul mouth. I, as a lost man, my mouth was just as foul as my dear friend from England. Just as foul. Not as foul, because he's, he's lost anyway. But, you know, my mouth as a lost man, because he's lost, um, was just as bad. Okay? But when the Lord saved me, that was one of the things, you know, it's like, shh. Remember, in the multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. But there are things known as acceptable words. Okay? In a general sense, it's how words are used in context. But remember again, there are such things as acceptable words, 
Meaning, obviously, logically, there are such things as unacceptable words. And we'll look at that here pretty quick. Okay? So let's continue. Verse 9. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. I got to, hold on. Never mind, it's okay. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. You shall know them by the fruits. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Look at that. Wise, knowledge, wisdom, conversation. See that? See? You know, brethren, we got to watch our mouths. Because as we've already addressed in this uh, proverb here, you can really cut people down, tear them, strip them apart with your tongue, with your words. And I know like it's what it says in, in Shakespeare, sometimes it's necessary to be, uh, to, in order to be kind, sometimes you got to be cruel. Eh, yeah, but some of us, we need to just really keep our mouths shut. Why? Because a fool uttereth all his mind. Okay? What? Got you no rule over your own spirit? Hmm. <laughs> You angry, bro? <laughs> uh, okay. Verse 22. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. These atheist fools would be like, Oh, see, they're calling a wife a good a thing, as she's a possession. Shut up. Go, go take a long walk off of a short pier and go pound some sand, okay? <laughs> it's a good thing to have a wife. The wife is not a thing, okay? Look at the verse. Whoso findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor of the Lord. Genesis chapter 2. All the way back to the beginning. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 on to the close of the chapter. And those of you feminazi women out there, you know, you, uh, these Christian women who are preaching and teaching men, yeah, yeah. You know, Quickly on that, Gail Ripplinger, um, I don't possess her book. Um, uh, I have heard her lecture or whatever, but um, she was teaching men. But anyway, remember, God, man, woman, children. Feminazi, God, woman, children, pet, man. Mm. Genesis chapter 2, 18 on to the close of the chapter. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air 
and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her on to the man. Woman. What does woman mean? We'll see. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Why? Because she was taken out of man. Woman of man. That's what woman means. Okay? The woman was made for Adam, not Adam for the women, for the woman, okay? L look, if you're a sister, or if you're even a woman who is watching, who make it this far, that's between you and the Lord. You, you, you know, feminism is a, is a satanic wickedness. It's, it's satanic, totally against God's plan, Okay? God's order is God, man, woman, children. Okay? Kind of address this with an allegory. God, there's a special place for woman in the plan of God. But you got to remember, the woman was made for the man, not man for the woman. Because the woman, as we see right here, was taken out of man. That's what woman means, of man, taken out of man, okay, of man. You're a headstrong feminist woman and you're a Christian, you gotta, you're not right with the Lord. Twenty-four, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. One flesh. Yes, that is talking about physical in intimacy. But it is deeper than that. Me and my wife, we are one flesh. Okay? We have the same father. Yes, we are one flesh. Okay? Uh, intimately, yes, but also in everything else. We are one, okay? We are one unit, my wife and I, okay? <laughs> That's how that works. So one flesh, yes, that does denote um, sexual intimacy. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It would be heresy to say otherwise. But it is deeper than just that, okay? Keep that in mind, okay? And... To have one without the other? To have something that is basically just based off of physical? <laughs> That's, yeah. But to have nothing of that physical? That's hard. I, I could never do it. That's why the Lord finally gave me a wife. One that he chose for me, not me myself. Okay, He chose my wife for me. As my, my wife, as he chose me for my wife, works both ways. See, okay, it works both ways. But on that, go to First Corinthians chapter seven. Okay, First Corinthians chapter seven. First Corinthians chapter seven. Have to touch this. First Corinthians chapter seven. Verses 1 under verse 5. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. If you could bear it, I could never do it. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence. Okay? And likewise also the wife unto the husband. 
The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise, also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time, that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again. You know what that's talking about. Why? That Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Now, there are, which I have heard of, there are incidences where a married couple, due to circumstances, cannot come together. Um, whether it's uh, like the one, the one brother, Theodore, who's... <sighs> like the one brother who's in a wheelchair, he can't. He, he physically can't. But, married on to his wife, okay? And they're happy together, okay? They're of the church of the living God. But he cannot because of physical thing, okay? Because he's, he's in a wheelchair, okay? But there are situations like that. But for normal, you know, healthy people, could, um, could, you, could you be married and not have come together? That, that's a hard thing. That, that would be a very, very hard thing. It would take a very special godly man or a very special godly woman to have a union, a marriage, where physical was non-existent. That would be very... The impossible is possible with God. Yes, but that that's a... For example, I could never, I, I could never do it. I could never do it. I could never do it. That's why the Lord gave me Sue. <laughs> you know, but see, now there again, you got to remember, brethren, Paul is addressing this why in this way, starting with this first, because why? That Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Sexual sin leads to all kinds of problems. I know, I used to be a sodomite, okay? It leads to all kinds of problems. So he's addressing that first. That does not mean that the physical is all that it is about. Prove that to you. First Peter chapter three, verses one on to verse seven, okay? Likewise ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating of hair and of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. I've heard the term Go put a face on. It's like, how disgusting. How disgusting. My wife is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Because of what is on the inside. Not on the outside. Okay? My wife is the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Cute to boot, too. Okay? Cute to boot. But see... The trophy thing, that's disgusting. I mean, now, now granted, you as a sister, you, you don't want to walk around looking like an unmade bed, disheveled. But no, of course not. But having, you know, if you have to put something on on the outside in order to look beautiful, um, chances are you're not. As a lost man, I can remember, I've seen as it has said, drop-dead gorgeous-looking women who were hideous on the inside. Just absolutely hideous. See, and that adorning on the outside, what is that? 
You look at these advertisements. If you you here on YouTube, if you got you know one of these fancy schmancy hell phones here, um, they got these TikTok things, shorts. And it's those are some of the most disgusting, suggestive little things that you could look at. It's like oh, but see that's all flesh. It's all flesh. Verse 4, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. And if you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, who's the hidden man of the heart? Huh? Yeah? And that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, great price. For after the, this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, right here, dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. And that's something to consider for those of you who are seeking a help meet or a husband. Okay? And I actually... I know of quite a few of you. Um, the wife is to be in obedience to her husband, and the husband is to love the wife as he loves his own body. And uh, Paul gives the example of how Christ loved the church. Okay? And it says there in verse 7, that your prayers be not hindered. For ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So see, being in marriage is a lot more than just the physical of being one flesh. Being one flesh, being of one mind, the hidden man of the heart, that kind of thing, yes. But coming together is an integral thing of marriage. Can there be a marriage without that? I know of Brother Theodore, who, um, like I said, paralyzed. That is the exception, yes, yes. Yes. Is it possible? Yes. But like I said, God would have to provide an extraordinary, God would have to do just what he does to put two like-minded people together like that in order for that to work. Because I tell you what, like I said, for myself, I can never do it. <laughs> so, but now go back to uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 23. Verse 23. The poor useth entreaties, but the rich answereth roughly. 1 Samuel chapter 25. 1 Samuel chapter, not 2 Kings. 1 Samuel chapter 25. 1 Samuel chapter 25, verses 2 under verse 12. The poor useth entreaties, but the rich answereth roughly. 1 Samuel 25, verses 2 on to verse 12. And there was a man in Maon, whose possessions were in Carmel. And the man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep and a 1,000 goats. And he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal. Ah, uh, yeah. And the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance, body. But the man was churlish 
and evil in his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. And with verse 22, what we just talked about, Abigail, great example of a godly woman. Her husband, Nabal, was what? Churlish and evil in his doings. But what does the Lord say of Abigail? That she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. Okay? Woman of God, Abigail, good example thereof. Let's continue. And David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did shear his sheep. Now this is after David done got out of Dodge because Saul was wanting to kill him. He took what they can, but they were they were poor. Okay? They were dependent on others and hunting and stuff like that. And because they were helping out Nabal unbeknownst to him. Okay, let's continue. And David sent out ten young men. And David said unto the young men, Get you up to Carmel and go to Nabal, and greet him in my name. And thus say ye, and thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, Peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. And now I have heard that thou hast shears. Now thy shepherds were with now thy shepherds which were with us, we hurt them not. Neither was there aught missing unto them, all the while they were in Carmel. Ask thy young men, and they will shew thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand, unto thy servants, and unto and to thy son David. Like, hey, we did good by you. We need help. Come on, can you help us out? Come on, we did good by you, man. Come on, we, we're not asking for much. Just give us a little something so we can feed the men and stuff like that. Necessity. And when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David and ceased. The rich answereth, answer, ah. the rich answereth roughly, shysters, Chintzy, cheapskates, tight wads, as they say. Well, you don't get rich by spending. Yeah, but helping out someone who helped you. Mm. In whatever means you are able, whatever those means are, David wasn't asking for this. He was asking for food. And the ball answered David's servants and said, Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse? There are many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Then shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shears and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? Look at that verse. Look at that verse. Shall I then take my bread, my bread, I, my, and my water, and my flesh that I have killed for my shears to give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? Seven personal pronouns. Ooh, I, 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 me, me, me. And all David was asking for was some food, sustenance, clothing, shears, stuff like that too. Okay? So David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told David all those sayings. And rightfully so. David was a little angry. And he's like, okay, everybody, come on, let's go. We, we've helped this guy. All, uh, all we asked for is a little food, maybe some stuff from the shears for clothing. It's all we wanted. Nothing much. Wasn't going to break the guy. But he was like this. Come on. We're going to go kill this guy. Yeah. Uh, let's skip down now to verse 15 on to verse 17. But Abigail was the one. When she found out about it, you, you know what? Let's continue reading this. 
Okay, 217. And David said unto his men, Okay, gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword. And David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about 400 men, and 200 abode by the stuff. But one of the young men told Abigail, the Baal's wife, saying, Behold, David sent messengers out to the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on him. But the men were very good unto us, and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything, as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us both by night and day, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Now therefore... Know and consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a son as Belial that a man cannot speak to him. And David's like, I'll kill everyone that pisseth against the wall. And then Abigail finds out a godly woman, Abigail, finds out, it's like, oh, wow. It's so like goes to David. Hey, whoa, hey, hey, hey! I, I, I didn't, I didn't hear. Here, <laughs> take the stuff. Come on, don't, don't. Hey, hey, my, my husband. He's, a, he's an idiot. His name's Nabal. Okay, they, please. And then, of course, David's like, well, praise the Lord. Uh, read this on your own time. David's like, oh, praise the Lord. I was gonna go kill this guy and everything, but thank the Lord, He sent you a godly woman. Don't, don't you fret yourselves, sisters. The Lord can use you in his ways. See, it took a godly woman to go pacify the wrath of the King David, who has had every right to go and wipe out Nabal. Keep that in mind. Take that as a little bit of encouragement for yourself there, sisters. Okay? And of course, uh, we already looked at 1 Timothy chapter 16. Okay, but see, the rich answereth roughly. And see, if, you, if the Lord gives you these things, not just this. Because remember, David wasn't looking for this. He was looking for sustenance. That's what he was looking for. Okay, remember, riches is not just this. And, you know, if you are able in whatever capacity it is, you are in, when someone comes to you like that, you better be mindful. Because when you look at Proverbs verse nine, uh, chapter 19, verse 17, He that hath pity on the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. You lendeth on, uh, hath pity on the poor, lendeth unto the Lord, because the Lord careth for the poor. Remember, blessed are the poor, for they shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Meek shall inherit the earth, that kind of thing. Remember? Okay? Finally, Proverbs 28. Uh, eh. <laughs> Proverbs, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 24. A man that hath friends must shew himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And of course, right away, verse, uh, Proverbs 17, verse 17, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Yes, yes. But let's finish this up with Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Like I said, this is... During my devotional time with our Lord, th this was just stuff. It's like when we came to this, was reading it, and the Lord's like, okay, go here. Oh, wow, go here, go here. So, whoa! So, Romans chapter 12, verses 9 unto the close of the chapter. In context, one amongst another. And also having charity, self-sacrifice. For others. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Extreme hatred for that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Amen. 
Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. In honor, preferring one another, like we said at the beginning. We as the Church of the Living God, we prefer one another. What, what would it do for me to have fellowship with someone who's lost? You ever seen some of these live streams these lost people have? Oh, it's like watching paint dry. It's, it's, oh, oh, it's disgusting. It's like, oh, wow, wow. I don't know how you guys do it. Anyway, let's continue. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, the blessed hope. Patient in tribulation. <laughs> yeah. Continuing instant in prayer. Pray without ceasing. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Given to hospitality. I've heard people who claim to be of the Church of the Living God that they, you know, if someone was in dire need like a homeless guy, you know, wouldn't show them hospitality. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. How do you bless those who persecute you? By telling them truth through scripture. Okay. Curse not. Curse not. Like they do. Okay. We do nothing but curse. <laughs> Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Can you be happy with your brother or your sister when the Lord blesses them? Can you weep with them when they are going through some hard times? We do. We have. And we will. Okay? Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. It, it, it makes me sick to see people, these Christians, who give off this thing that they're nice people, but yet they don't condescend to men of low estate. Because they're too good, you know? Makes me sick. Makes me sick. What about you? But yeah, what about me? Yeah, I do, con I, you know, the Lord, <laughs> Lord has allowed for me to con uh, condescend to men, uh, men of low estate. Why? Because I was almost one myself. I am one of low estate. Okay? It's called empathy. Some of you should try to have some sometime. Okay? Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. I'd love to live peaceably. But see, the problem is when you got certain devils out there who, who are in other nations sending information about you and your little neck of the woods that are overseas, who are using your email address and linking them to pornographic websites. I could prove that. Yeah. Yeah. See, hence the devils out there who have made their choice. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. We, as the church of the living God, we are for peace. But when we speak, when we speak, they are for war. It's a no-win situation. 
Why? Because they serve Satan. See, Hence, they are our enemies. And we are to hate them with perfect hatred. Why? Because they, have, they serve Satan. Knowingly, openly serve Satan. But yet, remember, they're King James Bible-believing Christians. Dearly beloved, <laughs> avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil but overcome evil with good. I use this, this scumbag as an example quite a bit because it's the best example I have of someone who would kill me if he had the chance. But um, a certain scumbag out there, if we were, well, number one, we couldn't be in close proximity because one of us would die. By his doing, if we were in close proximity, one of us would die. He would try to kill me and I would defend myself. So either one of us would be die dead. It would kill or be killed with this scumbag. Okay. But the truth is, if like, for example, his house burned down and in dire straits. See, the difference between you and me is I would help you like that. I would, if I were able, if something like that. And I know we couldn't be in the same proximity because one of us would be dead, obviously, obviously. But um, an experience is on your side, of course. But nevertheless, in like a drastic situation, if you were hanging on a cliff, I wouldn't stomp on your fingers. Even though you would do the same, even though you would do that to me. And see, brethren, that's the thing with these devils. See, the best way to defeat them is number one, don't let them get to you. Hey, <laughs> I know I gotta work on that. I know, I know. But, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Give them something to eat. Give them something to drink if they need it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You see? That's what's going to make us different, brethren. You know? That really is. And... Um, To the one who robbed you, if a bizarre circumstance came to be where if you didn't give him food that you had, he would die, would you? Would you? Because the scriptures tell us in doing so, you would heap coals of fire upon their head and the Lord would reward thee. And who knows what kind of testimony that would be onto such a person. What a way to finish this. What a way to finish this. Now, I'm not going to be going out of my way to try to do good things onto my enemies who would kill me if they had the chance. It's because, like I said, these, these, these guys have made their choice. But the point is, the point is, that in circumstance, a life or death thing, would you give to your enemy needful things in a dire situation? Say like a hemicane happened or an earthquake. Some of, most of you is like, no. So if your enemy were dangling from a cliff, you'd stomp on his fingers. Because that's what he would do to you. But yet, if you were to help him up and still kill you, 
Don't you think he'd have a lot more to answer for before the Lord for doing so, huh? And again, this is not, I'm not talking about being pacifistic. You know, if somebody comes wailing an axe at you or comes swinging at you, yeah, dodge and weave. But if, if you got no choice, okay, <laughs> let's go, buddy. You know, so that's going to be it for this video. Uh, like I said, I, um, doing my morning do devotional reading with our Lord and the Lord's like, hey, Brad. Oh, wow. No stop. Um, this was pretty impromptu, to be honest with you. Uh, got several videos and uh, the works and stuff like that. Um, going to be using OBS here coming up uh, in several videos too. Got a lot of stuff to go over, but um, like I said, this was impromptu. The Lord's just here. So. so thank you so much for watching this. If you do, hopefully this helped. Hopefully this was edifying to you. Um, like I said, this is what the Lord gave me. I share it. So, um, thank you, brethren, for your prayers. <laughs> thank you so much for your prayers. Please continue to pray for us as we pray for so many of you. Don't forget about our brother Jeff. He really needs you. He really needs your prayers. Uh, he really needs uh, whatever the Lord will give him. He, he really needs it. Okay? Also, to keep our brother from the Northeast in our prayers that his brother gets to come home. Pray for the health of a dearly, dearly beloved. Uh, pray for the, uh, please, pray for the uh, grace to be upon our best friend. And um, pray for the protection of our brother in Australia. That the necessities and needs be brought uh, onto our brother from Croatia, our brother from Norway, that he continued to be blessed, and uh, oh, there's, there's so many. Uh, uh, and our my own countrymen, my own countrymen, that bridges be established and that relationships are strengthened. Pray for one another, brethren. Pray for one another. This, this nonsense is just starting. So it's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this. If you do, we love you. We'll see you in the next video, okay?